inside this template, you'll find 448 controllers mapped in here. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Jakob Hack, I'm your host and you're watching uh, Hack Attack episode. And in this episode, I wanna introduce you to the uh, Media Designer Pro Mini Nova template that I've made. It took me over 350 hours, I think. It definitely took more than that, but that's what I've been able to track. So I simply spent between eight and 10 hours uh, each day for 40 days, not all at once, but spread out uh, during 2018 in order to build this. I'm a very focused kind of person, so I can't spend one hour here and there doing something. I kind of need to focus all of my attention on whatever I'm doing. So yeah, about 40 days between eight and 10 hours each of those days in order to make this. And so I'm really happy that it's done. Now, for those of you who are really impatient, I'm just gonna go through this really quick and mention some issues and some stuff that I didn't put in there, even though it's a really, really complete template. 448 controllers mapped in here. Oh, by the way, before I forget, this template will only load and display properly on iPads. So as you can see, I've got it loaded on an iPad mini 2 right here, and I've also got it loaded on my iPad Pro 12.9 inch. So all of the iPads in between, all of those screen sizes, the iPad Air and the iPad Pro 11, whatever, they're all good. You can load them and the template will display properly on all those models. However, this template will not load and display properly on iPhone simply because I didn't make it for, for that screen resolution. That screen resolution is a bit different. So you kind of have to redo it. And that's just another several hundred hours I don't have time for right now. And so, yeah, I'm sorry, no iPhone uh, template. The first page in the first bank holds the oscillators. And so here are all the controls for the oscillators, like the pitch and the waveforms. And as you can see, there are um, like a like a list picker. I basically put down the same names that you find inside the Vininova. I put them inside the list here. So it's very easy to find those waveforms you like. Next page in bank one is the filter page. And on the filter page, you'll find all of the controls uh, for filter one and two. And you'll also find the filter ample load ampere load you'll also find the filter envelope third page still in bank one you'll find the modulation envelopes there are altogether six envelopes inside Minova. one is an amplitude envelope one is a filter envelope and then there are four modulation envelopes that you can use for anything uh, inside the routing matrices and stuff like that just to get some nice modulation going and i want you to look closely here because all of the envelopes have pretty much the same um, controls in there and instead of just putting the a d s are uh, beside one another and then make the other controllers separate. I didn't want to do that. So what I've basically done is I've put like the slope control for the attack right beside this the attack, the slope control for the decay right beside the decay, the rate and time controls for the sustain is right there. So it's easy to find stuff that, you know, belongs together. And some of these phones, some of these controls have some uh, has like a white panel behind them because I just wanted to uh, kind of make stuff that are tied to one another uh, more linked in some kind of way, just like visually. Yeah, yeah, just to do that. The fourth page in bank A is the LFO page, and there are three of them. So here are all those of uh, so here are all of those controls. Now on the fifth and sixth. Now the fifth and sixth, uh, sixth, sixth. So on the first page, you'll find all of the slot selections for all of the effects um, and also the levels for them. And then uh, I've put all the effects um, that I could fit on that page under there. And then on the second page, there are more, but there are actually more effects uh, than these two pages. And then, so there is a third page, but that one can be found in bank two. So we're gonna jump over to bank two. Now the first page in bank two is the voicing page where you can find some global voicing controls and also the amplitude envelope. Um, here you can also find the mixer. And I kind of did it this way so that I would have like the oscillator and the voicing page uh, next to one another. So I could easily get started with my patches. The next page is the third FX page. 
where you can find the panning option and you can also find the controls for the vocoder and vocal tune. I know they're not basically effects, but they basically are. So yeah, I put them in the FX page. The third page in bank two is the arpeggiator and gator bank. And really I wouldn't have had to put them here because it's easier to work with the arpeggiator, the uh, gator and the quarter directly from the Mini Nova itself and its interface. But I put it here just <laughs> to make a complete uh, controller inf interface. And so yeah, it's there. Now the fourth page is the global page where you can find some global controls. And here you can even turn off and turn on the uh, wheel lights for the modulation and pitch wheels. Yeah, pretty cool. You also have like a global protect on off and yeah, you can see it yourself. And there's also a little note down there from me. And then we have a notes page on the fifth page in bank two uh, where I'm describing an issue. And I'll talk more about that in a little while. Uh, the sixth page in bank two is uh, a, a kind of an empty page. And I put it here because I have not put a patch selection uh, controller inside this template because I don't need it myself. And I tried to do it and I couldn't find a good way of doing it because it's using um, LSB uh, controls in a weird way. So I just couldn't make it work. I was trying to make uh, buttons and then tie them to a list where you could see stuff. But since there are three banks and there are different controls, I couldn't get it to work. So if anyone want to get their hands on it, here's a page to do that. Now, the third bank is where you'll find all of the routing controls for the modulation matrices. There are 20 modulation matrices in here. Um, and, so, and so there are four matrix options on uh, each page. So five pages with four each, that's 20. And there you go. Now, I mentioned a problem earlier and I'll go through it. I'll just, I'll just uh, pick up and read it. So there is an issue when controlling the template from the Mini Nova itself. Uh, when you have like both the MIDI in and out connected to the iPad, that means it can also, the Mini Nova can also send uh, MIDI back and whatever you do here will change in the template. The problem with this is some of the buttons, they're using the same LSB, um, LSB uh, address, 122. And all of those buttons, whenever I do a change on here on the Mini Nova and I use this value knob to change one of those options from on to off, then all of the buttons on that same address will light up. And there's no way for me to stop that from happening unless I turn off MIDI in for all of those controllers. And I've written about this inside here. The only way you can really get around it is by deactivating the MIDI in for all of those uh, buttons. The reason why I didn't do that is because I want wanted to make like a fetch patch kind of uh, button so that I could just tweak up a patch right here or just gather a patch from the built-in patches and then press get patch and it will automatically just read all of the uh, controlling elements and just do all the settings in here so everything would be mirrored inside here. But now I'm thinking that's a bad idea and I don't know if I can solve it but I'm gonna try to solve it in the future. Right, so if you didn't get that word salad, don't worry. I was preparing to make a fetch patch button, meaning when I press that button, it will read all the controls inside the Mini Nova and then adjust all of the controls in the template to whatever patch or preset I've got loaded currently in the Mini Nova. You see, I read about a feature like that here in the um, MIDI implementation chart. And in order for me to build such a function, I need every element, every controlling element, including the buttons to have their MIDI read on or MIDI in on. And so if I turn it off, then those functions won't get changed if I press fetch patch. Well, the thing is, I tried doing this and I couldn't get it to work properly. So I decided against it. And now uh, I'm still trying to figure out what to do about this. And I might make an update to this template in the future where I just disable the MIDI in for all the buttons uh, having this issue. 
And again, the issue only happens when you're controlling the template back from the Mini Nova itself. So if you want to avoid any issues, you could just either not touch the controls on the Mini Nova while you're tweaking your patches with this template, or you could just not connect the MIDI out from the Mini Nova to the MIDI in on your iPad or your iPad MIDI interface. Right, so let's summarize what's not in here because that's easier than summarizing what's in here because almost everything is in here. I, this template is like 98, 99% complete. So starting from the top, I didn't bother to map the, uh, the modulation wheel, breath controller or expression controller. I didn't bother to map the keyboard octave controller either for obvious reasons. Now there was a function in here to get the vocoder to actually sample or resample the spectrum for the vocoder. Uh, that's something I didn't map because I didn't really understand how to use it. And then we get to the quarter. Now the quarter has some functions that you need to control from the keyboard itself. So uh, I just didn't map those either. Like I said, some of these features are easier to use uh, or operate right from the panel itself. I also did not map the tweak assignment uh, option. That, that whole menu, I left that out. I usually do that by hand uh, either way. And I, I, for me, it wouldn't help if I did that through a MIDI template because I want to know where everything is. So whenever I map stuff like the tweaks, um, I, I do it by hand so that I'm actually touching the knob where I'm putting the control into so I can remember. I mean, the Mini Nova is perfect to, to uh, perform with. And so I really want to know where everything is. I don't want to do that from a template. And then I didn't patch out the uh, global MIDI channel selector. And also, as I said, there are no patch choosers in here. You can't scroll around patches. You can't load patches through this uh, MIDI template. So if anyone want to get into that, now you know what's not in there. Everything else, everything else is in there. 448 controlling elements. Now, if you're a Mini Nova user and you have an iPad and you don't have MIDI Designer Pro, then you can't use this template. You pretty much have to get MIDI Designer Pro. But then again, if you think about it, the price you pay for MIDI Designer Pro, even if you just <laughs> even if you just purchase it for this template, you have to ask yourself, isn't it worth putting in that extra whatever it is, like $10 or $20? I can't remember the price, but it's not that much and it might be worth it, right? Really, really worth it. Besides, I've already done all of the work and if you wanna work on your Mini Nova from your iPad like this, then this is a good option because there are no other Mini Nova controls for iOS until now. So, well, there haven't been until now. This is a weird phrase. Right, so you can find a link to a post in where you can download the template, or you could just uh, browse through it from within the app itself, MIDI Designer Pro, or you could go to mididesigner.com and search for it yourself. All options available to you, but the link is down there in the description. And if you didn't get this far into the video, then you're probably sitting there. You never told me where to download this. And I'm gonna be like, I'm not going to be like anything. I'm not going to answer you because uh, you could just have opened up the description before you asked me because I always put the links down there. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this kind of stuff and if you want to support my channel and my work, then then hitting that like uh, thing is really a, hit that like, just hit that like because oh, you're telling YouTube that this guy is the best and his content is like amazing. He's a, he's a god. I also have Patreon, PayPal, all of that stuff. Thank you so much for watching all comments and ratings. I very much appreciate you. Now I have to turn off the recording and hope that my telephone, I hope that my phone doesn't discard the video because I'm out of memory.